NASA's twin Voyager probes launched in 1977 stunned the entire world with their historic journeys to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Both missions are still in interstellar space 45 years later. In order to solve riddles within and beyond our solar system, some of which are more recent than the expedition, researchers are currently utilizing the Voyager data in a number of ways. The twin Voyager spacecraft from NASA features an 8-track tape recorder for recording data in addition to having around 38,000 times less memory than contemporary cell phones and delivering data at a rate that is about 3 million times slower than a 5G internet connection. These spacecraft have been preserved as historical artifacts. The Voyager still leads space explorations in spite of this. While the twin Voyager 1 and 2 probes are exploring, no other spacecraft from Earth has ever traveled to this extent. In August 2012, Voyager 1 made history by traveling into interstellar space for the first time. This is a region between stars that is teeming with junk that was ejected when nearby stars died millions of years ago. Both spacecraft are still transmitting scientific data about their surroundings via the Deep Space Network or DSN. Join us as we examine the incredible Voyager spacecraft's journey and the enigmatic messages it continues to relay to Earth from a great distance. What alarming data then has this abandoned spacecraft returned to NASA? What is the background of Voyager 1, as well as the entire Voyager program? How did this Voyager 1 suddenly start acting weird? You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. Voyager Interstellar Mission The primary mission of the Voyager spacecraft was completed with Voyager 2's close flyby of Neptune in 1989. A mission extension, the Voyager Interstellar Mission VIM, began after the two spacecraft had been in orbit for more than 12 years. The Heliophysics Division of the NASA Scientific Mission Directorate conducted a senior review of heliophysics in 2008. The panel came to the conclusion that the VIM is a mission that is very critical to sustain and that the program needs greater DSN, Deep Space Network, support and funding. The main objective of the VIM was to continue exploring the solar system after passing through the outer planets all the way to the heliopause, which is the furthest point in space where solar energy outweighs interstellar winds, and maybe further. In 2012 and 2018 respectively, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 both crossed the heliopause threshold. After going beyond the heliopause limit, both spacecraft have been able to monitor the interstellar fields, particles, and waves that are unaffected by the solar wind. Two major discoveries to date include the identification of a region with magnetic bubbles and the absence of any proof of the predicted change in the solar magnetic field. The whole Voyager 2 scan platform along with every instrument on the platform was shut off in 1998. All platform instruments on Voyager 1 have also been disabled. With the exception of the UV spectrometer UVS, the Voyager 1 scan platform has been kept operating to investigate UV emissions originating from the upwind side even though it was scheduled to go down in the late 2000s. UVS data are still being kept even if scans are no longer practical. Gyro operations ceased on Voyager 2 in 2016 and on Voyager 1 in 2017. Gyro operations are employed six times a year to rotate the probe 360 degrees to measure the magnetic field of the spacecraft, which is then subtracted from the magnetometer science data. A new world During the previous decade, both spacecraft penetrated the interstellar medium the thin substance that fills the vast space between the stars, entering a new domain. There, the spaceship continuously picks up fresh knowledge. The interstellar magnetic field's strength and direction have astounded researchers, and the new data has even sparked a dispute about the shape and activity of the heliosphere, the Sun's magnetic field. Is the heliosphere more spherical than the long-held belief that it is a comet-shaped structure? And does its size fluctuate with the number of sunspots, or is it more stable? The spacecraft has given some tantalizing insights. A long-distance explorer. Both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 left Earth in 1977. They weren't the first spacecraft to reach the nearest of the big planets. That honor belonged to Pioneers 10 and 11. Though more developed than the Pioneers, the Voyagers made a number of remarkable discoveries. Voyager 1, which traveled less distance than Voyager 2 in 1979 and arrived at Jupiter earlier, found that the planet's colorful moon, Io, had volcanic volcanoes. In 1980, Voyager 1 passed by Saturn studying the intricate details of the rings and discovering the first nitrogen atmosphere outside of Earth, near the moon Titan. A more beautiful route was taken by Voyager 2, which made stops at Jupiter and Saturn in 1979 and 1981 respectively, before passing through Uranus and Neptune in 1986 and 1989. The spacecraft then set out in the direction of other stars, 
Astronomers have defined the interstellar medium as beginning when the solar wind, the outflow of charged particles from the sun, ends. This ionized gas or plasma pushes against the colder, denser galactic plasma flowing around it, much like a stone blocking a stream. The heliosphere and heliopause are terms used to describe the hollow created by the sun, just like the tropopause is used to describe the top of Earth's troposphere. At the time Voyager was launched, we really didn't know how far out the heliopause was, according to Don Gurnett, a Voyager researcher at the University of Iowa in Iowa City. Some thought that the heliopause might be as near to Jupiter or only five times as far from the Sun as Earth, at 121.6 astronomical units, or nearly four times Neptune's distance. Voyager 1 finally reached its destination on August 25, 2012, exactly as Gurnett had predicted 20 years earlier. But the passage was so divisive that NASA took an additional 13 months to announce the accomplishment. Yet, Voyager 1 did find some indications that it had passed the heliopause. The disappearance of high-energy solar wind particles suggests that the remaining solar wind was likewise left behind. Moreover, cosmic rays from outside the solar system, which the heliosphere partially protects, intensified following Voyager's passing. But a lot of scientists weren't persuaded by this information alone. There were two problems. First, a problem with Voyager 1's plasma instrument prevented it from recording the rise in particle density that happened when the spacecraft departed the heliosphere and entered interstellar space. Second, despite expectations that it would, the magnetic field outside the heliosphere did not point in a different direction. According to Kermigus, nature wasn't just aware that it is intended to change the magnetic field direction because it hadn't read the theorist's papers. It is yet unknown why the magnetic field inside and outside of the heliosphere coincide. The Sun helped make Voyager a success. Solar storms that had earlier broken out in 2012 shocked Voyager 1 as it was speeding through plasma, causing electrons to vibrate and create radio waves that the spacecraft recorded. The frequency of these radio waves revealed that Voyager had in fact entered a much denser region, heliopause. With data from Voyager and other findings, scientists must look into this conundrum and offer an explanation. It is not a novel idea that heliopause is not constant. Throughout the past 10 years, researchers have used information from various sources to understand its dynamic nature. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were the only spacecraft to escape the heliosphere, and NASA's interstellar boundary explorer IBEX satellite, which keeps track of energetic neutral atom emissions, has helped to shed light on the location and behavior of this boundary. The Voyager spacecraft only provided direct observations at a precise point in space and time. IBEX completes their statistics by adding more context. Scientists have developed models that predict how their heliopause may alter in the future using this knowledge. The heliopause is a boundary that is constantly moving, unlike the solar winds and interstellar medium, which push and pull against one another. However, data from more recent heliopause research refutes past conclusions. For instance, the IBEX satellite discovered that the brightening of energetic neutral atoms ENAs, in 2014, which first suggested asymmetry in the heliopause over a period of months, was incompatible with the models as it is now. According to data from the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft, the heliopause appears to have migrated considerably in a short period of time, which may assist to explain the huge time interval between the entry of the two probes into interstellar space in 2012 and 2018 respectively. The heliopause moves, however, which calls into question ideas that have been advanced to explain its stability. In a publication that was published on October 10th, the researchers thought that these disparities were intriguing and perhaps disputed. Scientists want to continue researching heliopause in the hopes of learning more about it using NASA's Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe, a new and improved satellite that will launch in 2025 and be able to detect ENAs. What is causing the heliopause's unexpected behavior is currently unknown. Voyager 1's Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, which keeps the high-gain antenna pointed at Earth, started transmitting jumbled data instead of the customary updates on the condition and health of the spacecraft in May of this year. This behavior is comparable to electronic aphasia, a disorder that impairs one's ability to communicate fluently, another intriguing finding that needs more details to fully understand. The information gathered might not precisely reflect the spacecraft's current state or is generated at random. Although NASA has stated at time that the AACS may have been in an aberrant state, the engineers were baffled by the fact that updates from the spacecraft Voyager 1 appeared to be in great shape despite the strange situation. The radio signal from the ship was still strong and dependable, indicating that the antenna was still directed at Earth and not in the position that the AACS reported it to be in. However, despite the AACS's peculiar behavior, Voyager 1's science systems continued to gather and send data as usual. 
Whatever the AACS issue was, it didn't cause it to trigger a fault prevention system that is designed to put the spacecraft into safe mode in the event of a breakdown. Luckily, NASA engineers were able to identify and resolve the problem. It was discovered that the AACS had started transmitting its telemetry data using an onboard computer that had long since failed, resulting in the data being jumbled after the command to the AACS was sent. He was able to send his data home using the right computer after the experts were able to fix the problem. The next challenging challenge will be to determine what led the AACS to switch systems in the first place. According to NASA, it is likely that the system received the incorrect instruction from another onboard computer. The main cause of this issue must be found and fixed in order to prevent additional issues, even though it is believed that Voyager 1's health is not now in grave danger. Voyager 1 has been traveling through interstellar space for the past 10 years, leaving behind the magnetic shield of the Sun that had previously shielded it from cosmic rays and other forms of interstellar radiation. The same way that Earth's magnetic field protects humans from solar radiation and high-energy particles, without the safeguard, it is possible that the onboard computer circuits of Voyager 1 are experiencing memory issues due to high-speed energetic particles. The Voyager 1 mission is still in operation more than 45 years after it was planned to, despite these challenges. Despite its elderly age, the Voyager 1 spacecraft is still delivering vital data on the furthest regions of our solar system and beyond. That brings our space trip for today to a close. What more might we ask of missionaries who have already left their posts? Do let us know of your opinion in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you at the next one.